All right, so next up we have Andreas, and he's a mathematician translating uh, ideas from geometry, algebraic geometry into software, and so yeah. welcome. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk a little about, bit about uh, Grobner bases. So uh, Julia obviously has a lot of capabilities in numeric computing, uh, solving ODEs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I wanted to, to show you a little bit about what we can do with the symbolic uh, capabilities that Julia also has. Um, so when we're working with polynomial equations, Grobner bases are king. And we have a wonderful package in Julia called grobner.jl, which can compute uh, Grobner bases of polynomial ideals. However, sometimes our uh, polynomial equations, they have parameters, and, uh, and grobner.jl doesn't account for this. So when we have parameterized polynomial equations, we need parameterized Grobner bases. And this is where my new package, uh, parame parametric Grobner bases.jl, comes in. It basically computes uh, Grobner bases, which spans the different uh, values that these parameters can take on. Um, so I wanted to show you a little example of the kind of stuff that you can do with these parametric Grobner bases. So we're going to study what is called the orthic triangle. So if we have a triangle called ABC, um, we can draw the heights of uh, this uh, triangle from each vertex. Uh, we can intersect these heights with the, uh, with the edges of the triangles, and that gives us three new points. These three new points describe a new triangle. This new triangle is called the orthic triangle. Um, and so we, we um, normalize our situation a little, little bit so that A and B are fixed here, and the only parameter we have is this top point C, which is described by two uh, numbers. And then we have these uh, vertices of the orthic triangle here, which are the variables of our system. Um, now, the crucial insight here is that this can be described as a polynomial ideal. So uh, the first equation here describes that the point P2 uh, sits on the line spanned by A and C. And similarly, the second line describes that the point P3 is on the line spanned by B and C. Um, and, well, the two last lines says that the points P2 and P3 are on the heights, so that the line from B to P2 should be orthogonal to the line from A to C. Um, don't worry about the details here. You can, you can work them out uh, on your own if you want to. Um, but in Julia, we can describe this, so we we use Nemo uh, for multivariate polynomials, and um, well, we set up our parameters here and our variables, and then we describe the ideal. Uh, and then we can compute a so-called Grebner system. So this is a lot. <laughs> um, but basically, it describes under what conditions on the parameters does the Grebner basis look different. Uh, so for example, down here, it says if this polynomial equation is zero and this polynomial equation is non-zero, then b squared is the Grobner basis of this system. Um, so we are interested in the first case here. Whenever b is non-zero, this is the Grobner basis of the ideal. And that's sort of the, the generic case uh, whenever the triangle is non-degenerate. Non um, and we can extract this from the Grobner system. Um, so we want to ask ourselves, when is the orthic triangle isosceles? So isosceles means that the distance from P1 to P2 is equal to the distance from P1 to P3. And we can answer this because this question can be asked as an ideal question. So when is this polynomial here describing the difference between the two distances in the ideal generated by this setup? Um, we can do this in Julia using zero reduction, so we can construct the ideal uh, that we want, and then we can factor the pseudo remainder of this polynomial uh, with regards to this Grobner basis. And we get a bunch of polynomials, and well, the inclusion holds whenever this polynomial is zero. So if a squared plus b squared minus one is zero, then we have this conclusion. Um, so this corresponds to uh, these three lines here. So basically, as we saw, whenever the point C here is in the middle of A and B, 
obviously the uh, orthic triangle will become isosceles, uh, and we see that here as well, where we have the factor A, that is uh, the, the x value. Um, and so this plot here gives the entire solution set. Um, but this can be done in, uh, in all sorts of programming languages that support multivariable uh, polynomials. We have Macaulay 2, we have Singular. All sorts of, of, uh, of languages can solve this problem. So let's look at something that only Julia can solve. Uh, so how large can this orthic triangle get relative to the original triangle? Um, we're going to move a little bit quickly around this, but basically we uh, introduce a new variable uh, called R, which describes this ratio between the areas. And then we do a pseudo remainder again. And then we can basically, if we have uh, the values of A and B, we can substitute into this uh, pseudo remainder with those values, and then we can solve the resulting uh, polynomial, which is just a polynomial in one variable. And that gives us the ratio between these two um, areas. Uh, this being Julia, we can just find a package that we want to use. We'll use optim here because it's easy. Uh, we can call the optimize function, and it gives us the value that the optimal um, ratio is 2. So the orthic triangle can at most get twice as big as the original uh, triangle, which is not described anywhere, as far as I'm aware. Um, but it's really easy to figure out using Julia. Um, that's it from me. Uh, this is a link to uh, the package in question. I would like to thank especially uh, Grobner Basis and Alexander, who put in a tremendous amount of work to, to write that package, and the, uh, the Nemocast system, which has enabled all this uh, multivariate polynomial com computations in Julia. Um, the two QR codes here, the one to the left is to the repository, the one to the right is to another example, because a lot of things can be described using polynomial equations. Uh, so this example is looking at the uh, lotka volterra differential equations and trying to find steady states of those. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, any questions? What algorithm do you use to compute the Grobner basis? Um, so we delegate to, uh, to Grobner.jl, but that implements for shares F4 algorithm. Yeah. Is the package already registered? Uh, it is not registered yet. Um, I am working on that, but uh, not yet. It will be, though. All right, so let's thank you, Andra, once more time. <laughs>